Hello there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Sonia. This is Sonia with an I. And today I'm going to be talking about my February reads and reviews. I had a wonderful month in February. It was just fantastic. I read so many great books. I had kind of a little bit of an identity crisis, you could say, because I normally read so many cozy mysteries, and I read others too, but cozy mystery tends to be where my focus lies. And this month I feel like I shook the box a little bit and I enjoyed it. It was, I was totally here for it. So let's talk a little bit about books. The first book that I read, and I think I'm cute, I'm gonna do this without glasses. So let's put these on. Ah, so much better. I'm going to apologize for the reflection. And also my windows are open, so if you hear birds, it's practically spring here. So spring is springing. Uh, the first book that I read in February was Baking and Entering, The Raised and Glazed Cozy Mystery. This is a very short book, and it was enjoyable. The setting is in uh, Osage, Missouri, which is close to Branson, so I enjoyed that part, being a Missouri girl myself. I um, The setting was really cute. It was a cute little donut shop. The main character was likable. The story was interesting. The plot was interesting, but it was very short. So I found that I didn't really have enough time to develop a relationship with them enough to really be sucked in. I did give this book uh, three stars. I do plan to continue it. I don't, I don't know, I don't have a plan as of right now to continue it, but I, I will read the next one. It's the murder was, the murder and the plot to me, I think was the star of the book. Uh, that's what I found the most interesting. I would have liked to have had more descriptions of the donut making and the community and the town, but when the book is so short, it's really hard to get that in there. So, um, like I said, I believe I gave it three stars. It was a good read. The second book that I read in February was a Harlequin retro romance. I know I read a romance but I did to support my friend Sarah at the Bookish Knitter and Storm at Storm Reads. They did a retro romance uh, reading challenge in February. It was February, it's the month of romance, and I thought, eh, why not? So I threw a romance in the read. The name of this book was called Song Above the Clouds by Rosemary Pollock. And the main character in this book is, she's, I believe she is 19 or 20, and she is with her sister at her brother-in-law's family's home in Paris. And she um, was supposed to go to this, she's an opera singer, and she was supposed to go to this audition and her sister's car broke down and they didn't make it. And it's all the story, like how they had to walk to a, to a phone booth and all of that. So it definitely had that retro vibe that I love. Now, I will say that she is very young and she talks about this gentleman she fell in love with when she was 17 and he was like 37. So it's a pretty big age gap. I personally, when I look at that, I think of 17 year old being a child and that kind of gives me the uh, for a minute, but you know, everybody is different and there wasn't any like spicy, anything she's just talking about. She pines after him basically. Honestly, the book didn't have any really any spice in it at all. There was no spicy scenes. So, but this, this gentleman that she is in, in love with is her brother-in-law. Um, so he is at the family home as well. And she's just like, oh, and, and he's kind of like, whatever. And so she gets her feelings hurt. But he tells her, because he's the man and he knows everything, that she needs to go, because she missed her audition, she needs to go to Rome and audition for this, this person in, in Rome. So she decides to do it, even though she kind of doesn't want to. She doesn't even know she wants to be an opera singer. She doesn't know what her heart really wants because she knows that if she devotes her life to this entertainment, that she won't be able to have the, the normal kind of life. So she goes to Rome and she meets this gentleman also who ends up being, it, it's kind of like a tangled web. It's like she meets another gentleman who at the, the family house that ends up showing up in Italy. His mom is this, this famous Italian actress, but also happens to be the love interest of the fellow that she's so in love with. But she's kind of a, a man eater and it just doesn't work out. And then he wants her back and he loves her and she's like, whatever. 
it, it was it was interesting. I gave it three stars for for its time. I mean, because there were some ooh moments there, and there were a couple of moments that I was like, but for its time and for the story and for the plot, and the, there was a little bit of a twist at the end. I enjoyed it. I'm not. I don't hate that I read it. I thought it was decent. So I might even, I have a few of these that I found at thrift stores and whatnot. I might read them. Might be in the mood to read them. Who knows? You never know what I'm into. As you can hear, spring is springing. Uh, <laughs> the next book that I read was fantasy. I read Dragons of Autumn Twilight by Margaret Weiss and I want to say John Hickman or Josh Hickman, one of the two. I'm sorry if I don't have that exact author. Uh, Dragons of Autumn Twilight is part of the Dragonlance series and is in the vein of Dungeons and Dragons. The story was written actually to be a part of another, from what I understand, a part of another play set or something that goes along with Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't play Dungeons and Dragons when I was a young person, but I was still interested in it. Like I remember watching people play. Um, I loved the cartoon, by the way, with, I, I absolutely loved the cartoon, but this has a, it has totally the Dungeons and Dragons feel. You have the thief, you have the, bar, you have the barbarian, you have the, um, the, I'm trying to think, thief, barbarian, knight. You, you have all of those quintessential characters in it. And, uh, the thief is actually my favorite character. He's a kinder whose name is Tasselhoff and he's quite funny. But it's this, I was craving a Hobbit-like story. Now, I love fantasy, but in fantasy books, it is either full of war, full of, like, violence, and uh, I, I don't, I don't want to read, I don't like to read that. I mean, it, it just, it does not appeal to me, or it's romanticy, and I, I don't really want to read that either. I want a an adventure where the story is about the friendships that are made throughout the travels, the world building. That's kind of where I want to go. And I read this 20 years ago and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to try it again because I remember it being very Hobbit like and it is. So this group of people, there's a, a plains, a plains woman and a plainsman. There is a kinder, or the, he's the thief, there is an elf, there is a barbarian, there is a knight, there's a dwarf. They decide that they're going to meet, besides the plainsmen, they come later, but this group of people are going to meet at their local tavern. They've planned a, planned a specific day because they're all on their own adventures and they come back together and they find that their, their town in the world of Kryn, this town has been overrun with these lizard warriors and they are destroying the town, destroying the people. And so, and they're in search of this blue staff. And as they're talking about this in this tavern, they're like, we're going to have to get out of here. Oh, there's a mage too. I forgot. There's a magic man. As they're talking about this, this, the, this plains woman and a plainsman come and she has this blue staff and they end up, kind of saving them and then going on this adventure to getting all these little clues and pieces to find out who is and who has started this war, why this war is happening and getting, experiencing different parts of the world of Kryn. I really enjoyed it. It was what I was looking for. A lot of it is cozy. Like when they talk about being at the tavern, they talk about the food, they talk about the music. They, they often discuss their feelings and the things that they did in the past and how it affected them as people and as humanity. This book was written in 1985, 1986. And I was really surprised that of the, the female representation, but the author is female. So that maybe that's why they're, it's the females are not just eye candy. They're not just, you know, the sum of their parts. They're actually like smart and leaders and a tr contribute. They don't stand around and go, oh, I don't know what to do and wait for a man to tell them what to do. I I think it's great. I gave it a, so a solid 4.5 stars. It was almost a five star read for me. There was a few things that I was like, I got a little confused about, but the rest of it, the if you read this, The Wicker Dragon about put me in the floor. I laughed so hard. I think it's really great. 
if you like fantasy, if you're my age, you probably have heard about it or read it if you read fantasy. But if you're a young person and you're looking for some fantasy, I highly suggest Dragonlance. It, can, it comes also in a book of three, a trilogy. That's how I read it the first time. But I believe there's actually four, for one for each season. I know that there's a, a summer one, but I think that it ties into the world of Crin. And then it branches off into all these other books too. I don't know if I'm going to get that crazy, but I do plan to read the rest of it. Though the next one is winter, and if I'm going to mood read it, I need to get on it because, as you can hear, spring is here. The next book that I read, and I apologize for doing this. I wish that I could remember all of the books, but it's not going to happen. I binged a series. It is the Sassy Cat series by Jennifer Ch J. Chow. It is Mimi Lee is the main character. Mimi Lee gets a clue, I think is the first in the series. Mimi Lee reads between the line and then Mimi Lee cracks the code. I read all three books in the series. The main, character's name, main character is Mimi Lee. She owns a pet grooming business called Holly Wolf in Los Angeles, California. And she is... Uh, She's young. She's in her 20s. At the beginning of the first book, she's single and she bumps into this really attractive man and they end up dating throughout the series. It does have a lot of dating in it and like them going on dates. It's not spicy at all. It's um, sometimes I felt like that it focused a little bit more on the dating and the what does he think, what is that sort of thing than the mystery. But I will say... My favorite part of this story is the cat Marshmallow. And what made this bingeable for me and made it unique for me was the fact that she and Marshmallow communicate telepathically. Marshmallow can talk to her and tell her clues and what the other dogs and cats and birds and everything are thinking because she he can talk to them. And that made the story interesting to me. I love anthropomorphic stories. I love stories where the animals play a part in the, in the solving of the, of the mysteries. And Marshmallow is just a sassy cat. And he's adorable. And that is what made this story for me. I enjoy the family. Her sister is really heavily involved in the second book. Um, her sister's a teacher. And uh, it, also, it just, if you like animals, the, there's a lot of talk about grooming animals and what they look like when they come in and and all of that which I greatly enjoyed I greatly enjoyed that part of it there's um, also there's a lot of culture in this book a lot of uh, Eastern Asian culture um, Asian American culture there's also um, the love interest is from or has ties in Hawaii so he often talks about like food from his culture it's very interesting I love those parts of it. Uh, like I said, I think 3.54 was the average of the series for me. If I took all the books and averaged them out. And I, I, I thought it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable enough for me to binge it. So uh, if you if you like, I like the uniqueness of the communication. Like she got a lot of information from Marshmallow that the police officer could not. So very interesting, very interesting read. I like Jennifer J. Chow's uh, writing style too. I really enjoy her LA Night Market series. The next book that I read was A Long Overdue at the Lakeside Library by Holly Danvers. The main character's name is Rain and she lives in a um, cabin on a lake. And that cabin was left to her. Her her mother used to run it, but her mother is, is away. Not She hasn't passed, but she's away. So this young lady in the first book comes back because she's um, she's grieving a relationship and she moves to this cabin. The cabin has a library in it. And so when people are on vacation or they're in their, at their lake houses, they have a library to go to and she manages the library. Her best friend lives um, in the house or has a, the cabin next door. And um, in this one, there's someone in the community is murdered and the husband of the best friend is the prime suspect. I enjoyed this one because it had to do with ice fishing. And I don't know much about ice fishing, but I thought it found it interesting to learn about it. Because there's like an ice fix, ice, I can't say ice fishing, but ice fishing competition, which I found incredibly interesting. Um, 
I like the main character. She is, um, she's very, she's very intuitive, but she's also one of those sleuths that like puts, kind of puts herself into some trouble and that like they were breaking into a house and that makes me nervous. I, I don't love when the mystery, when the suspect is someone that the main character cares about. And I know that happens a lot in cozies and I can still, it can still be a five-star read for me, but it makes me nervous. And then I, it makes, it gives me anxiety. I, I just, I, I don't care for that part, but I did really enjoy this book. I gave it 3.5 stars. I will continue to the next, uh, one in the series. This is a series for me. It's not a binging series. This is a mood reading series. Um, the next one's in the summer and I will read it in the summer. The next book that I read was, is part of a series too, but I didn't finish the whole series. So I'm going to talk about both the books. The first one in this series I read was from the House Flipper series, the House Flipper Mystery. And it's by Diane Kelly. I adore, I have, I'm Diane Kelly just is rights for me, I think, because I have loved everything that I've read from her. Now, I've only read two of her series, but both of them I've enjoyed, and this one, this one was one of them. This was a five-star book for me. Now, I couldn't find the first book on Audible, so I went ahead and started with the second book, and it was five stars. It's called Dead in the Doorway by Diane Kelly. The main character's name is Whitney, and Whitney is a carpenter, and she and her cousin build houses, they flip houses, they buy something that needs a little work, put the work in, sell it for a profit. Uh, the first book, Dead in the Doorway, they bought a house of an older woman who had passed, and she didn't pass in the house, but she had passed anyway. And in all of the, in the house, there's a body there, and mystery ensues. I love, this, it isn't, I don't find it necessarily cozy, even though her roommate is a chef and they do eat some good food. I, I But I don't think cozy is necessarily just food either. It's ambiance and whatnot. I don't find it super cozy, but I do find it incredibly interesting. I, I can't build an Ikea shelf. Okay. But she's building and talking about all these different building things. And I, I was incredibly interested. And to me, if you can do that to, for somebody who doesn't really have an interest in it, that's awesome. That, that pulls that enjoyment rate up for me. So I gave it a five stars. Uh, this is going to be the Cozy Mystery series that people are going to hear me recommending quite a bit. It is worth the read. If you're doing, my, if you're doing March Mystery Madness and you need cat on the cover, there is a cat on the cover. His name is Sawdust, and he has his own chapters, and he is darling. The second in the House Flipper Mysteries that I read was Murder with a View. It's also by Diane Kelly. It is the third book in the series. I gave it five stars. Uh, Whitney and her cousin, I think his, I want to say his name is Buck. He reminds me so much of my cousin Craig. Uh, Whitney and her cousin buy this old abandoned run down hotel kind of reminds me of a Schitt's Creek situation and it is right in downtown Nashville this whole series takes place in Nashville which I love because there are lots of referencing to local Nashville things that are actually there and you can actually go visit like they talk in this one they talk about Tootsie's and I know that that's a real place and you can go there I've driven I've never been but I've driven I've seen that the place so murder with a view this, uh, they buy this hotel, they find a homeless person there that had been staying there and um, he ends up becoming, they end up, he becomes very helpful and they, I love when stories redeem people who are down on their luck and both the last one and this one kind of do that. But they also find a dead body in another room as they're trying to improve this and this dead body is a famous country music, music singer, which I... I liked it. I enjoyed it. I don't really listen to country music myself, but I know enough about it that um, I was, you know, early, late 90s, I was a fan. So I, I loved it. I just, it, I don't know how to explain how it just kind of makes you, it's a familiarity that just, you know, it kind of brings back. The mysteries are incredible. The, there's a romance in this. Diane Kelly knows how to write a romance. She really does. That makes me happy. 
that doesn't overtake the mystery, but still makes you root for them to get together. Like you want them to get together. You want them to be together. You want them to be happy. I don't, I'm, I'm going to, to toot the dying Kelly horn all day. I enjoyed that one a lot. The next book that I read was flipped, flipped for murder by, Di, by Maddie day. <laughs> uh, this is the country store mystery and this is uh robbie is the main character robbie has lived in her town for several years but she has just opened this country store that is not only uh she sells vintage kitchen items which that's what brought me to the table I'm gonna be real honest and then it also has a restaurant and she robbie comes off more like she's older like i thought for a while she was my age and then as I'm reading, I'm like, oh, wait a second. She's in her late 20s. She comes off like she's older. And I don't know for me if that's because she has such a love of vintage items. Because she talks about loving vintage items. But there's not... My only complaint about this story is there wasn't a lot of vintage items in it. The only thing that was mentioned was like some old um, soda advertisements. Tins that they used for serving things. And uh, some of the uh, the cast iron corn shaped cornbread makers, but there was no mention of. I'm sitting here thinking like vintage stoneware, Pyrex, um, you know, all of that sort of old Crocs, red handled utensil. You know, I my brain because I love vintage kitchen items. I was thinking of all that. Most, I think most readers, especially if they didn't have an interest in that, probably would not have even noticed. For me, that was like, I want more vintage kitchen items. But uh, the mystery was really solid. There is some, there, there is some dating. Like the very first chapter, she's going on a date with her lawyer, I think. Uh, there is some dating. I don't find it necessarily cozy, but I think thought the murder and the plot were really interesting. Um, there is talk of uh, employee harassment. And my favorite character, honestly, that was in the story is one of her employers or one of her employees who happens to also be the mayor's daughter. She handled herself very well in, in, in some situations. And I just, I like, she's kind of sassy and I enjoyed that part of it. I will reread, I will read the next one. Um, I gave this one, I think I gave it 3.5 stars. I, I enjoyed the murder part of it. I kind of wanted more cozy in it. You know, when I, like I said, when I was thinking vintage things, cozy, you know, I'm thinking more kind of like granny chic vibe and I didn't get that, but it doesn't mean it wasn't a great book. So the next book that I read was a hearty five stars and it is Love and Saffron. And um, the author of Love and Saffron is Kim Fay. This is a book, um, it is not a cozy mystery. It is a apostolary story of two ladies in the 1960s, um, in the late 1960s. This is uh, the, one of the ladies is a food, writer for a uh, Pacific Northwest magazine or she writes about she lives on an island in, in Washington and she talks often about going uh shellfish shellfish um fishing I don't know what that's called oh, you know or crab crabbing and all of that sort of thing and how they prepare those things to eat and the young lady lives in Los Angeles in a very, um, she isn't Mexican herself, but she lives in a area that's very um, Mexican influenced, a lot of Mexican culture, a lot of Mexican food. And she ends up writing to the, the lady in Washington, telling her how much she loves her articles, how she gets to experience so many things that she can't experience where she lives. And this friendship ensues and they send each other spices and they recommend these foods and they do recipes. And it really, if you are a foodie, which I am, I love to cook. I love to bake and I clearly love to eat. Um, if you, if you're a foodie at all, this, it just, it just pulled and tapped and hugged and did the Macarena with all of my heartstrings. It just was beautiful. I read with a box of tissues for a book that was less than 200 pages 
for me to be as invested as I was in the characters to the point where I felt like they were friends, you're doing something. It really is lovely. This is not, I would not say if, this isn't a, if you read, read this. This is like, I feel like anybody who reads this is going to enjoy it. No matter what genre you like, no matter what kind of story you like, you will enjoy this. When in they, There's some historical bits in it, like the Kennedy assassination is mentioned, the, uh, the Montgomery riots. Um, it's just incredible. It's an incredible book about how you can build love through letters. Uh, one of my dearest friends is a pen pal of mine. I met her by writing letters. And she's now one of my dearest friends, someone that I talk to quite frequently. We've, I've visited, she's been here, you know, it's, it's incredible. It's just an incredible story of, you know, how friendships can form in, in many different ways. I highly, if you've not read this, I highly suggest you read it. It is probably, I don't know, the, the next one I'm going to talk about, my two favorite reads as far as just books go. It, it's way up there. And my last one is... The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. The Blue Castle, the main character, and her name has slipped me. Oh, I have one more book that I read. Sorry about that. I have one more. The her the main character is a let's she is a spinster. She's um very she's like everyone's punching bag in her family. They all treat her horribly. Her mother is horrible horrible to her but she's kind of quiet she's kind of mousy and she's described as kind of plain and she's um she's always felt like she's not worthy of even being in her skin and her family thinks she's odd because she doesn't like she doesn't have a husband at 20 something nor does she even really interested in in that whole situation she is she doesn't like sewing and knitting and, and embroidery and cook. She doesn't enjoy those things. She loves being outside. She loves nature. She loves reading books about nature. And they just think she's odd. And her family all lives together with an uncle and her uncle has a lot of money. So they feel like they kind of have to, you know, suck up to him. Well, <clears throat> she has starts having some of these ailments and I think I would call them panic attacks, but I'm not a doctor and this is, you know, early, this is like early 1900s. So I'm sure that, you know, they don't know what that is, but she goes to a doctor and she has this medical report done. And in the medical report, she finds out that she doesn't have much time to live. She gets this dreary diagnosis and she decides that she's going to live her life for her. And the things that she does, it's just incredible. It is just it is so incredible. Like she, she's not, not, I don't think she's cruel, but all this bullying and all this kicking that she's been getting for so long, she puts a stop in that. And she decides to go out on her own and she, you know, does what she wants to do. And there's romance in it. This was, from what I understand from my good friends who know more about Ellen Montgomery than I do, this is her only book that she wrote for adults because most of her characters are, are children or, you know, mid teens or like, you know, children. So if you have not read the blue castle and you enjoy Ellen Montgomery or you like more, you know, you like enjoy that time. I think everybody should read this because it just gives you, it's a beautiful story, but it also gives you that satisfying feeling of how you know really just truly being who you are and celebrating that uh i just thought it was beautiful i absolutely thought it thought it was beautiful and i would might highly suggest reading it if you haven't my last book and uh, my last book is farm to trouble by uh, amanda flower i read it for the killing time with cozy's read along it is the first in the series it is a story about uh, a young lady who goes back to her hometown because her father is ailing and their farm is failing. I didn't mean to rhyme that, but it did. Look at me, Dr. Seuss. Anyway, um, 
she ha they have financial trouble there is uh she asks a local person for financial help but it ends up being someone that her father hates and then he was dead and then the father is the suspect and she's trying to prove and i will say um I, I don't think this was the book for me. I like Amanda Flower. I love the Amish Candy Shop series. I um, I didn't find this one cozy at all. Matter of fact, it, it, I was like, no, I was I was anxious for her in their family situation. Like it kind of, I didn't. It wasn't re, it wasn't a relaxing read. It was like I was tense, you know, for her family. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I. I I don't like it when the family member or someone they care about is accused, but it's that wasn't the only thing that I just didn't think worked for me. The series is farm to table, yet there was very little farm or table to me in it. Um, everyone in the town was really cruel to this young lady, and all she did is when she was 17, she went, she had opportunity, she had opportunity in a dream, and she just went, she left town to, to pursue that. Um, a lot of them are hurting because there was, her fiance had died and then she left. And uh, I think a lot of people were blaming her for that. I just, I didn't understand. And I realized everybody grieves differently and I try to look at it through that lens, but I just thought they were unnecessarily mean to her, including her family, her cousin. Um, yeah, her cousin was horrible to her. Like she needed to be kind of, uh, I also in fe feelings, there was never one person that felt like a safe space for her. So I felt sorry for her in that, but I also kind of struggled with even understanding her too. You know, I just, like I said, I didn't, I just don't think it was the book for me. I rated it 2.5 stars. Um, I don't think that there's so many other series that I would like to get to and that I want to read. I don't know if I will continue on with this series. I will say that I, they're good. I love the, the, young lady i think her name was hazel i thought hazel was probably my favorite character she was a little girl in it um very very sweet she loved animals and the dog whose name was huckleberry i thought that was clever um i like i said i don't know if i'll continue with this series but it wasn't because it was bad i just don't think it was for me so that very lengthy video. If you are still here, you are a real champion. If you are still here, Lee, since February is the um, the month of love, uh, leave me a heart of your favorite color. And if and I appreciate you sticking here, sticking with me, listening to my opinion of some of these books. Uh, I appreciate all of you who are um, liking and subscribing. And if you haven't done either of those things or even share, if you know other book people who are interested in a book, you feel free to share. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. If, um, if no one has told you today that you make a difference just by being in the world, you sure do. I appreciate you and I know others do too. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Goodbye.